Today I will show you palette gear, physical buttons, dials, knobs for Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, you name it. So, let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another fun episode. This will be a short review about palette gear, expert kit, so let me show you what's inside. Alright guys, this is how the kit looks like. You have three knobs, two buttons and two sliders. First thing that you need to do after you open the kit is to go to Palette Gear website, download the software and installation process. It's really fast and easy. After that, you need to use USB cable that uh, is provided with the kit to connect the brain here unit, the brain unit with, with the computer. So, a really great thing about this is that you can really easily and really fast detach it and attach it wherever you want. You can make your own custom order. You can create any shape that you want to suit your needs on the table and the fun can begin. As you can see here on the screen, I have a real life representation of those units here. And for example, if I detach one of them, for example, the button down below, it will not be visible on the screen right now. And if I attach it on some other position, for example, the top left, it will immediately become visible here on the screen. You have a lot of custom profiles that came predefined with the software. As you can see here, all of those are for Photoshop. You can create your own profiles or you can go and download additional profiles from the community page. And you can, of course, your, upload your own profiles to the same community page. Every button slider and knob has its own function and you can change the function of each of them by clicking on one of those units. So I will change the function of this create uh, uh, curse adjustment layer by clicking on this. As you can see, all of those uh, units are now connected to Photoshop CC mode and I can go from curse maybe to history and set undo redo point or anything that I want. But I like to be curse. And you have the colors here down below. So this means that you can change the color of the unit. Maybe I want from uh, light blue to red so that my unit, this button will be more recognizable. So now I know that red color represents create curse adjustment layer. That's really nice and handy. So you can say done and then go maybe to brush opacity and change it to maybe yellow. Why not? Then I can go to brush size and I want brush size to be maybe more saturated, darker blue. And I will say done. Okay. Ready guys, here in Photoshop, I will show you how this works on real life example. As you can see, when I move this slider, I will move, I will change the brush size in real time. And this is really nice because uh, really speed up my workflow. I don't need to go to bracket keys to change the brush size or to use a mouse, etc. I will just move this slider and really fast and really precise, I can change it. And as you can see here at the top, I have this menu, I can move it wherever I want. I like to uh, have it here and it shows me the brush size value in pixels. That's really nice. Another uh, knob here, I set it for uh, scrolling through, through layers. As you know, I'm doing a lot of composites and my work has a lot of layers, ton of layers. So I can really quickly go up and down through the layers. Another really nice thing is maybe I will go here and create a new layer and with the brush just, let's, let's use some color, let me show just create a few different history uh, steps and you can really easily go undo or redo just by rotating this knob. This is really fast way to undo or redo things on a screen. I have another slider for brush opacity and maybe this button is to create curves adjustment layer. As you can see, I create it. I can tap again, create new curves adjustment layer and so on. I can go and maybe merge everything together and then with another button that I pre-program it to go to camera roll uh, filter because I use it all the time. I will just click a button and it will open my camera roll filter. Then I can go and tweak things as ever I want. Right guys, as you can see here now we are in Lightroom and I changed the order of my units because I like it more like this. The beauty of this is that you can really easily change 
and rearrange the, the order of this. My two sliders now are set for white balance one is for temperature, the up one, the top one, and the bottom one is for tint. So I can really easily in real time move this and change the temperature of the image. Maybe I want more, more cooler and I can change the tint maybe more towards the magenta or maybe more towards the green. I don't know. Depends on the taste. One of those knobs are for shadows, increase or decrease shadows. You can really easily reset it by clicking on the knob. It will reset. Another is for highlights. Okay. I can maybe lower the highlights and open the shadows a little bit. I have one for exposure. This is for exposure. Maybe this is too much and I, I will just click on it and really easily reset it. Another button here is to see before and after how it was. This is a really fast way to see your progress. And I set another button to change the presets. Now I will go to another mode by clicking on this. I will change from uh, one develop presets to another. So now I have those sliders for vibrance and another for saturation. That is really nice. I have these knobs now for uh, vignetting. I can add vignette to an image really quickly, just rotating this knob or I can just go and add some clarity or reduce clarity, depends what I want. If I click on the knob, I will reset everything off. And another one is for contrast and so on and so on. You got a point. Right guys, as you can see here, we are in Premiere Pro and this unit, this uh, palette gear, it's really, really handy for a Premiere. I like it a lot and use it all the time. For example, I can, I have my own presets here, predefined. Uh, of course you can use, let me show you, you can use a lot of predefines or go online and download some of them, but I have a few of my own. All right. I have uh, one knob set just to go through the timeline, really nice and easy frame by frame. This is really handy when I want to tweak and trim something really precise. I have one button that it's red color set to cut the timeline. As you can see, this is really fast. Just cut it, go to a spe specific point, cut it. Okay. Then I have one uh, knob set to go to edit points, really nice, easy and fast. And I have another knobs here to zoom in or out the timeline. This is something that I use really often. One slider is set to scale. For example, let's go here and make this image visible. I can scale this image really quickly, scale up or scale down. And another is for opacity. I can really nice and easy change the opacity of the image. And the beauty of all of this is that you can animate this in real time. So you can press play. For example, let's go here to the beginning of the opacity, move it all the way down, press play this button, green button is for play. And now I can animate this as you can see in real time. If I don't like it, I can go here and delete everything and start again. Let's go here. I can start again, put it in a zero play it, and make it more visible, less visible, all the way visible and so on. And now if I start and play it again, you will see that it's animated in real time. Of course, you can use a palette gear to control your music player like Spotify or to browse the web with a Google Chrome. All right, guys, that's it for today. If you want to know more about the palette gear, please check their website. The link is down there in the description. If you have any questions at all regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. If you want to support me on this channel to make it even bigger and better, you can do it by visiting my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. And of course, you will get some things in return. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that bell to get notified about the future episodes. And see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.